What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to go through a proof of the trig addition formulas for sine and cosine. So for this proof here, I wanna look at Euler's formula, specifically the one involving e to the i theta, which is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, where theta is an angle and i is the imaginary number. And the way we're gonna go forward with this is I wanna look at, if I were to write out these two equations here, if I have e to the i a plus b in parentheses. I could express this using the formula as cosine of a plus b plus i times sine of a plus b. But now I'm gonna write this a second way. Instead of calling this e to the i a plus b, we could say that e to the i a plus b is equal to, if I distribute i, that's e to the i a plus i b. And then I could do this, I could do one more step of algebra here. I could call this e to the i a times e to the i b. So next what we'll do with this is we'll express e to the i a times e to the i b as a product. So e to the i a we could call cosine a plus i sine a because we're just once again using Euler's formula that we started with here. And now e to the i b we could write as we would have cosine of b plus i times sine b. And now here we just have to distribute. So we're going to have the next part here, cosine A times cosine B. So I have cosine A times cosine B. And then plus, and I'm going to do things a little bit different here. Instead of distributing to the last term here, I'm going to distribute I sine A to I sine B. So I'll have I times I is I squared. And then we'll have sine A times sine B. And then now I'm going to distribute cosine A to the last term. So I'll have plus I times cosine A times sine b plus, and then the last thing to distribute is i sine a to cosine b. We'll have i times, and I could write this as cosine b times sine a. So now one thing to be mindful of is that i squared is equal to negative one. So in the next line, we could rewrite this as cosine a cosine b plus negative one, or I could just say minus sine a sine b. So now what we could do here is we could factor out a common i from the last two terms and we'll have i times and we'll have cosine a sine b plus and then we'll have cosine b times sine of a. So now we'll just combine everything. We said e to the i a plus b is equal to e to the i a times e to the i b. But I'm going to write the expanded form of this. Notice what we have is we have e to the i a plus b. We expanded with the formula that was cosine of a plus b plus i sine of a plus b, that this is equal to e to the i a times e to the i b, which is this expression here. So now for the last bit of analysis, anytime you have a complex number where you have a real part and an imaginary part, the only way that it's going to be equal to another complex number is if the real parts are equal and if the imaginary parts are equal. So the first thing I would notice here is that the real part of the left side is cosine of a plus b, and that's going to be equal to the real part of the right side, which is cosine a cosine b minus sine a times sine b. And then once again, in a complex number, the only way they're going to be equal is if the imaginary parts are equal as well. So that tells us that we could set the imaginary components equal to each other, which allows us to say then that sine of a plus b is going to be equal to the imaginary part of the right side, which would give us, we'd have cosine a times sine b plus cosine b times sine a. So this is going to wrap up the proof of these formulas. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.